Good morning and welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. Welcome today uh, for worship uh, on November the 8th, Sunday, November the 8th. We are glad that you're here. We're glad that you're making uh, time out of your busy day to uh, worship God and to be with us here at Grace United Methodist Church. Again, my name is Colin Taylor. I'm the pastor here and it does give me great joy to say hi and, and welcome and uh, wish we could welcome you in person, but maybe we'll be doing that soon. Uh, but however you're worshiping with us, whether you're worshiping with us on Facebook Live or on our website, we want to know that you're here. So, of course, if you are worshiping with us on Facebook Live, just uh, navigate down to the bottom to the comments section where you can uh, just write your name in, uh, write your the folks who are worshiping with you, uh, maybe even tell us where you're worshiping from. It's always fun to see the different places folks are logging in. But if you're worshiping with us on our uh, website, uh, just navigate to the upper right-hand corner where you'll see a link that says Connection Card. Click Connection Card and fill out the forms that, uh, that, that appear before you and then click Submit and we'll get your uh, registered attendance via email. Got a great service of worship in store for you. We're starting a brand new, worship, uh, a brand new sermon series today called Spent. When we're going to talk about being emotionally spent as well as how we spend our money. So we'll talk about a variety of different things over the next few weeks. Uh, we also have great music in store for you as well. So I know that God will be praised. So let's be about that important work now. And who shall separate the dust? What later shall we be? Whose keen is turning thy scan? And it's all the mystery. boys and girls. I am so excited that you're here with us again. So you might remember me talking last week about the bag that I packed for Burris Elementary. And look over here, we already have six bags full of food. And you can find the link to how to pack up a bag on our website. And if I'm smart enough, I'll remember to post it on Facebook underneath this video. And we are trying to pack up 25 bags. And so those of you that are learning to count, you might think, hmm, 25. And we already have six, so that means 25 minus six, so 25 less than six. And altogether, you, we need another 19 bags. So I hope maybe you and your family can think about packing up a bag and praying over it and bringing it to the church in the next week or so so that we can ha help others have a happy Thanksgiving. We are starting a new sermon series this week on earn all you can, save all you can, 
and give all you can. Those were John Wesley's three rules about money. And you might remember our bucket from when we met in person last. So we have $90, I counted it up today, that we collected all together. So in a way, we, we brought it together to worship. We earned this money so that we are able to share it with others. So that was our gift to the church. And I want you to think about, hmm, what animal might you want to give away? So there are animals such as goats uh, or cows or pigs, llamas, chickens, all kinds of things. I will put a little list of them, and I want you and your family to vote on your favorite animal so that we can figure out what we are going to give away in a few weeks. So I hope that you boys and girls are excited as I am that we can send off a gift that will bless other families. So let's put our hands in the air before we go, and hands in prayer. Dear Jesus who loves us, help us, we pray, to be your good children and live the right way. Amen. Bye, boys and girls. Let me invite you now to join your voices with mine as we together pray those historic words of the Apostles' Creed. Pray now with me, won't you? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let's continue now, sisters and brothers, to be in a spirit of prayer 
as we pray, uh, pray these words together. Gracious and holy and loving and creating an eternal God, for all the things that you've placed in our lives, all the people uh, that love us, uh, and, and, and indeed even this great church that you've placed in our lives, we want to offer you our thanks. We ask a spirit of calm and peace and serenity uh, as, our, um, as, our, as our election process continues to take place. And we ask that you uh, grant us patience uh, that we move forward as we uh, figure out who might be our leader for the next four years. And loving God, we also ask that you renew in us, ignite in us a spirit of service and passion that we might never, ever forget your call on our lives to serve others, to be bold in our faith, to love you and to serve others, uh, that we might also never forget the great commission you've placed on us, on each and every one of us, to spread your son's will and your son's teachings throughout the world that we might make new disciples of Christ. And God, now we ask that you uh, hear our silent prayers as we each one of us pray them to you now. Why don't we continue to pray? But now let us pray in the way that Christ taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As always, we have a couple of ministry opportunities that we want you to be aware of and really that we need for you and want for you to participate in. Uh, the first is, uh, don't forget, we've got a bunch of food bags. We've got those behind us on the altar. We're trying to gather 25 food bags for Burris Elementary. So far, we've, we've been able to gather six complete bags. Some of you have donated even a little bit of money that we're going to try to use to, to stuff a few other bags. Uh, but we really need 19 more. And so if you are willing to participate to buy a few items, that you, there's a list of, of specific items that are needed. We would really appreciate that. I certainly know that the hungry children at Burris Elementary, uh, some of the children that go hungry at Burris Elementary, would very much appreciate that too. So if you're able, let's go ahead and put together 19 more Thanksgiving bags uh, for Burris Elementary. Again, that list can be uh, gotten from Grace Notes. Uh, and, and, and if nothing else, you can just call the office and we'll be glad to share that list with you. Remember, those do are due, the food bags for births are due on uh, November 17th. And then looking ahead to Advent, we've got a couple of new uh, opportunities that we want to make you aware of. Beginning on Sunday, November 22nd, at 5 p.m., we're going to have an all-church Bible study, an all-church book study. Now, what we're going to be looking at is a book by Adam Hamilton, and uh, that what we study on that Sunday night will be directly related to the sermon for the next Sunday. So you'll have all week to think through the scripture. You'll have all week to think through some of the questions that we ask on the previous Sunday evening when we gather up. But we want you to participate starting on November the 22nd at 5 p.m. And this will be via Zoom. We'll record all the sessions as well. So if you want to participate later, you can't make it at 5 p.m. exactly. You want to participate later, you certainly can. And we want you to be able to do that as well. And then the next Sunday, which is Sunday, November the 29th, we're going to be starting a church-wide Sunday school 
that begins on November the 29th at 9.45 in the morning. That's uh, going to be done via Zoom, and it'll be family-friendly. Uh, young kiddos and, and older folks, uh, grandparents and parents, all, all folks will be able to contribute and uh, participate in this uh, this Sunday school uh, class. So we want you to be a part of it. It'll be again via Zoom. And we're going to be sharing the Zoom information for all of this stuff that's going on uh, via Grace Notes. So be sure you're checking Grace Notes. Uh, and uh, we'll also be recording everything so you can participate later on if you need to. And then finally, I want to invite you uh, to an all church meeting uh, this coming Wednesday, the 11th of November. Uh, as we are going to, we're just going to go over some of the church's finances, the first three quarters of the church's finances. I'm going to uh, 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 go over each and every month how much money came in, where those, um, where those dollars came from, and then how much money went out. Uh, and the, I think it'll be very informative for all of you uh, to just kind of really get a really good uh, grasp on how we're doing financially. So that's this Wednesday, the 11th. Um, at 7 p.m. in the evening. So I hope that you can join us. Of course, almost all of this stuff would just not be possible without your giving. So we want to invite you to give now. If you haven't already done so, we want you to go ahead and give now and give generously. As always, there are a few ways that you can give. You can give via text. Just simply text Grace UMC Heights, which is all one word with no spaces, Text Grace UMC Heights to 77977 and you'll have a couple of back and forth exchanges. Very fast and easy way for you to give to your church. If you want to do that or not able to, you can certainly give online just by simply visiting our website, uh, graceintheheights.org forward slash give. And that too is a very easy way, very quick and very secure way for you to make sure that your church receives your gifts. And then finally, you can just do one of two other things. You can bring a check by the church and, and drop it off at the church office. We're certainly glad to receive your dollars and your tithing that way. Uh, or you can drop a check in the mail, and we'd be glad to receive your checks and your tithing and your dollars that way. So uh, make sure that you're giving to your church and giving as generously as you possibly can so that we can continue the great work that we've been about for more than a century. I also want to invite you now to pray with me as we ask God's blessing on our gifts. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, for this church and all that it's meant to so many people for so many years, we give you thanks. We also freely acknowledge uh, that all that we have um, first comes from you and that you acknowledge and ask us to give back to you just some of which that you have first given us. So we thank you, God, for that ability to give back to the church and give back to you. And we ask that you bless these dollars, that you bless these gifts, that they may be put into uh, ministry, that uh, the ministry they're put into be uh, life-changing ministry, not only to people of this church, but people indeed of this community that you have called us to serve. We ask this as we always do in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Okay, let's turn our attention now um, to Scripture. We're going to be looking at the Gospel according to Matthew, actually for the second week in a row, uh, even though we're, we're two, two different sermon series. The second week in a row, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Matthew. But this time, we're going to be looking at the sixth chapter of Matthew. Uh, you may remember that uh, the sixth chapter of Matthew is part of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. So this is some really important words from Jesus. In Matthew 6, chapter, verses 19 through 21. So hear now the word of God. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. So let us respond by saying, thanks be to God. Amen. So as I mentioned, I think as we were coming live this morning, uh, we're starting a new sermon series today called Spent. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be mostly talking about money and what Jesus said about money. And then we're also going to frame what Jesus said about money through what the founder of our United Methodist faith, John Wesley, said about money. Uh, and, and as he did, as John Wesley did for a number of other topics, Wesley was able to really boil down a very important topic in the Christian faith, money, and, uh, and what we do with it, into three fairly simple and fairly easy things to remember about it. We'll go over those in just a second. In a sermon that he preached when he was just in his early 20s, he said the following about money. He said, earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. And we'll, we'll spend some time each week over the next three weeks breaking down what Jesus and John Wesley said about these three topics. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. And that will really be our primary uh, topic of discussion. But I have to freely admit right here at the beginning of the first sermon in this new sermon series that the series title, Spent, really could also be a great way to sum up how many of us are feeling right now. You know, a little bit spent. I wrote in my column that this week that we might especially be feeling a little spent right now. It might be a little bit easier now than in, in normal times or, or other times for us to be feeling a little emotionally drained, a little spent, a little exhausted. And I think that one of the many reasons we might be feeling a little bit spent right now it can be pointed directly at the coronavirus and the anxiety that some of us have been uh, building up over the past few minutes, uh, pa pa uh, past few months surrounding the coronavirus. I mean, seriously, things just haven't been the same, <laughs> haven't been normal for quite some time now. And frankly, it may not be normal or the same for quite some time to go especially as positivity rates around the country are beginning to spike again. And that alone may be enough to make us fee, uh, feel a little frazzled, you know, a little, well, a little spent. And then, of course, there's the presidential election. It very well might, having, it may, very well might be having us feel a little spent. And I, I got to tell you, one of the disadvantages to recording sermons and worship on Thursday rather than, than being able to participate in worship with you live is that I can't adequately address what we might be going through right now. Because uh, as of the writing and delivery of this sermon, we still don't know who the president for the next four years is going to be. Maybe you will be by the time you're watching this. Maybe by Sunday we'll have a very good idea of who will be leading this country uh, for the next four years. But right now, we don't. And you know, it also dawns on me, I've seen this on Facebook and in other places, uh, it also dawns on me that we haven't had an election day. We've, we've had like an election week. It's, it's been exhausting. 
And it might have us feeling a little spent. There are other reasons too. Some of you might be employed. Some of us might be unemployed. When we're used to working every day for eight or ten hours a day, now we're unemployed. And in fact, that's the case for more than 25 million Americans right now. I know some of us are out of a job, and maybe that has contributed to feeling a little bit spent. Or maybe your mom or your dad has recently been checked into the hospital and you can't see them. Or maybe another loved one is checked into the hospital and you're not allowed to see them because of the aforementioned coronavirus. Maybe you're struggling with addiction. Or, or maybe actually having a job is just absolutely draining to, to you. You just can't do it anymore because it's not feeding you. You're not enjoying it. It's joyless. There are, are of course, many reasons that we might be feeling a little spent right now. But let me tell you, if that's you, if that's the way you're feeling, you're not alone. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking a little bit about our emotions. We're going to be talking a little bit about money and how sometimes those things, those two things, go hand in hand. And as I was doing a little bit of research on the Internet, reading various blog posts, Mary actually sent me a great blog post that I read through, and of course reading through some of my own books and doing some of the research there, I stumbled across a sermon that was preached about four years ago by a woman named the Reverend Leah Rosso, when she was, and she may not, she may be the pastor there here now, I don't really know, but she, when she was the pastor at First United Methodist Church in Sartell, Minnesota, which I've never heard of before, but I just loved her sermon on this topic, and I wanted to share some of it with you because in that sermon, she quotes John Wesley heavily around some of the same topics that we're talking uh, about today, that we're discussing today, and so I wanted to share some of it with you. She said, first... John Wesley said, earn all you... And this is a direct quote from from, uh, John Wesley's sermon uh, that that, uh, earn all you can, give all you can, save all you can, and give all you can comes from. She says, first, Wesley said, earn all you can by honest industry, using all possible diligence in your calling. You see, Wesley knew that there are plenty of ways then and certainly plenty of ways now to make a lot of money that's dishonest or at the very least takes advantage of people. And we know that Wesley would never encourage that. We certainly know that Jesus would never encourage that. In fact, I wonder, and this is me speaking now, I wonder what John Wesley, what Jesus might say about the founder and CEO of Amazon, who is, I think, the currently the richest man in the world, Jeff Bezos. You see, before this pandemic started, nine or ten months ago, for the, for the American people anyway, he was already, Jeff Bezos was, he was already an extraordinarily wealthy man. Before the pandemic, his net worth at the beginning of 2020 exceeded, are you ready for this? Exceeded $70 billion. I mean, I guess that's enough to live on, right? For the rest of your life and many hundreds of lifetimes thereafter. It's pretty good. But now, uh, at the end of September anyway, we're of course into November, but at the end of September, his wealth uh, has increased over the past nine months So much so that right now, if he gave every single Amazon employee, and keep in mind that Amazon employs an incredible 876,000 people around the world, if Jeff Bezos gave every one of his 876,000 employees a $105,000 bonus, and I wonder how many of his employees make less than that per year. See, if he gave all 876,000 employees a $105,000 bonus at the end of this year, he would be just as wealthy as he was at the beginning of 2020. That's how much his wealth has increased over the last nine months of COVID. Was this, as Wesley put it, taking advantage of people? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But we also know that 
hundreds of thousands of American people during that same period of time haven't seen their wealth or their net worth increase. But we've seen, as, uh, we've seen the fact of the matter that hundreds of thousands of people uh, over the last nine or ten months have actually slipped into poverty. Some might even say have been pushed into poverty. Is that taking advantage of people? I don't know. But instead of taking advantage of people, it is Wesley who encourages us to think about what our calling is. How, God, how is God calling us to use our gifts and our skills and our talents? And then how to use those gifts and skills and talents uh, diligently to follow that calling by not wasting any of our gifts and not wasting an opportunity to, well, make a living using those gifts. We see that in Wesley's own life. Even though John Wesley was a priest in the Anglican Church, in the Church of England, uh, he also was a professor at a university. He wrote a number of different books, mostly publishing his own sermons. He was even a gardener. And he used all of these life skills, uh, to, uh, all of these talents that he developed over the course of his lifetime to make money. Uh, either to make money for himself or to somehow benefit the community in which he lived. Secondly, Wesley said, earn all you can without paying more for it, and we'll talk about what it is in just a minute, without paying more for it than it's worth. Let that sink in. Earn all you can without paying more for it than it's worth. As I said again a minute ago, what is it? Well, he goes on to say that any job or any way to make money that affects one's health whether that's physical health or mental health or spiritual health, is not worth it. Wesley notes that we should not continue in a business if it deprives us of time to sleep or eat. I mean, how many of us have been working away at our desk, just accomplishing one task after another, and suddenly realize it's 3.30 or 4 in the afternoon and we're hungry and we realize we forgot to eat lunch? Happens to me sometimes. But if we're earning all we can for God's sake, and then it's also part of God's will for our lives that we take care of ourselves, that we have whole and healthy lives, then those two shouldn't be working against each other. Wesley then goes on to say, uh, to earn all we can, but not at the expense of losing our soul. And if what we're doing to earn all we can, is destroying us, then again, it's definitely not worth it, no matter how much you're compensated. And then finally, Wesley said about earning all you can, he said, earn all you can, but not at the expense of your neighbor. What we do to earn money should give all people life, not death, not ill health, not to make them poor, not to take away their livelihood. In other words, as Jesus might put it, the golden rule of loving your neighbor as you love yourself is how we earn and how we spend our money. Now, we'll get to more of this later on in the sermon series, but though Wesley earned in his lifetime really a tremendous amount of money, he died virtually penniless. So I'm going to ask the question over the next few weeks, how did this happen to Wesley? And how might it, why might, should it happen to us? How did, how did this happen if he earned such a substantial amount of money? Well, as I said, we'll discuss that in a few weeks. But I want to close with this question. What would your life look like if you earned all you could but that all that you were earning were cons was considered for God. Or that you were earning all you could for God's sake. Would things be different? Would your career look different? Would maybe your life choices look a little different? Well, maybe. Maybe not. But I want you to, to prayerfully consider that 
over the coming week or so. And then consider if there are things you could change or we could change now that would change the why behind earning all you can. Amen. Sisters and brothers, over the past hour or so, maybe not quite that long, it's been my hope and it's been my prayer that in some way, shape, or form, you have felt or heard God reaching out to you or, or even speaking to you or leading you in a new direction in your life. I hope that you have uh, felt that God was worshipped. And I want to invite you now to hear this benediction. Sisters and brothers, in the name of Christ, go forth from this place ready to be the hands and feet of Christ. Go forth and ready to offer the Prince of Peace to all whom you encounter. And go in peace. Amen.